with the St. Louis Cardinals preparing to face the Rays and Randy Arozarena, are they making a similar mistake with one of their current AAA stars that they made with Randy? This is Locked on Cardinal. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans. I'm J.D. Haffern, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou, and a lifetime Cardinals fan. And I'm your host for Locked on Cardinals, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Follow me on Twitter at J.D. Sports Radio and the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. We want to thank those of you who make Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. Find us on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Make sure you go and find us on YouTube as well. If you haven't seen us there yet, you can like, subscribe, and comment. A lot of interaction going on with the Cardinals fans on our YouTube page and make sure you hit that notification button. If you do join us over there, because that'll uh, let you know when those new episodes are posted. This is a show serving Cardinal nation and giving the best fans in baseball, all of the info about the birds on the bat. So the Cardinals are going to begin a series in Tampa Bay tonight uh, against the Rays and former prospect, Randy Arosa Reina. Now I'm not going to go into this big old tirade about, Oh my God, how did we screw that trade up? Blah, 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 blah been down that path before we know that it hasn't quite worked out the way we wanted it to but if you don't know the story at least I can give you a little bit of background maybe you're new to the show maybe you're you're just becoming a Cardinals fan this year which is weird because they're not good this year (laughs) so I feel bad for you if you're just joining us but quick background many moons ago the Cardinals had current Tampa Bay Rays star Randy Rosarena in their system He's from Cuba. The team signed him as an international free agent back in 2016. He's like 21, 22 at the time, something like that. Um, But he's just moving countries and, you know, he's making new adjustments in his life, big adjustments in his life. First year, 2017, not awful, not spectacular. 266, 11 home runs, 49 RBIs, 18 stolen bases between A and AA. 2018, similar numbers, but he's doing it at a higher level. 274, 12 home runs, 49 RBIs. 26 stolen bases between double A and triple A. 2019 is where he takes off. He's at triple A the whole time. It's 344, 15 home runs, 53 RBIs, 17 stolen bases. Cardinals call him up, right? And they call him up in August and they give him a whole 23 plate appearances. 23 during this call up where he goes six for 20 with a home run and two RBIs, two stolen bases. Now, granted, the Cardinals were in you know, a playoff push that year. You know, they were a good team in, in that season. They won the NL Central. They 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 go up to the NLCS and lose to the Nationals who go on to win the World Series. So not like you have a lot of room there to just be testing dudes out. I understand that. Um, their outfield that year, Harrison Bader, Marcelo Zuna was in left field still. Dexter Fowler was still there. Uh, they had Jose Martinez still because he did play some outfield as well as first base. Tyler O'Neill was on the team and was uh, somebody they liked. Lane Thomas, who's doing great things for the Washington Nationals now, was also getting playing time with the now 24-year-old Randy Rosarena, who is scraping for at bats. So the Cardinals decided in the offseason that they had enough outfielders and now's a good time to maybe move some of them and go get some pitching. Okay, they had Harrison Bader, Tyler O'Neill rated over a Rosarena. So they decided to, to trade him and Jose Martinez to the Tampa Bay Rays for their first round pick from 2018, who was Matthew Libertor. I can only assume that Libertor was somebody that they were already eyeing up during that draft and were kind of bummed that the Rays took him ahead of where the Cardinals picked that year. And uh, that same season, they picked Nolan Gorman, by the way. So often forgotten in this trade. And I do want to point this out because people forget about this, that uh, part of the, the trade there was the swap of the supplemental draft picks. And with the pick that the Cardinals got from the Rays, they ended up selecting Tink Hentz, who is now your second ranked prospect in your organization. Okay, so don't forget about that. Just through the futures game. People love him. Great name, Tink. Come on now. He's the number 58 overall prospect, according to MLB Pipeline. So it's not like it was just Libertor and they didn't get anything else in return. You got Tink Hentz as part of this deal, too. So since the trade of Rosarena, 
he's become a star. We know that, you know, he wins that ALCS MVP in 2020, where he's not even considered a rookie yet because he didn't have enough appearances in at bats, but goes on to do that. Then he sets the record for most home runs hit in a single postseason, most hits in a, in a single postseason as this phenomenal 2020 uh, postseason year during the COVID season. Then he goes and wins rookie of the year in 2021 becomes an even bigger international star with team Mexico in the world baseball classic makes the all-star team this year. He participates in the home run derby against another former Cardinal prospect and Adolis Garcia, which was very painful for a lot of us to watch. And now the Cardinals have another prospect who, who is tearing the cover off the ball at AAA. Okay. Let's bring you back to now tearing the cover off the ball at AAA at Memphis. And just like a Rosa Reina was, and his name is Lucan Grovener Baker. Doozy of a middle name there, right? Lucan Baker is his name. We've talked about him on this show a few times before. He's a hoss, big dude, 6'4", 280. He's older than a Rosa Reina was when a Rosa Reina was in the Cardinal system at this time. Baker's already 26. They drafted him, uh, out of uh, college. He went to TCU, second round pick in 2018. He's currently the 29th ranked prospect for the Cardinals, but he just snuck in there this year. He's had some decent seasons in the minor leagues. 2019 high A Palm Beach, 244, 10 dongs, 53 ribbies and 122 games. 2020, COVID, no minor leagues. 2021, he hits a combined 249 with 26 bombs, 70 ribbies, at double A AA and triple A, although we only had seven at bats at triple A that season, but he was there. 2022, he's at Memphis the whole season. Hits just 228 with 21 home runs, 66 RBIs, and 124 games. Again, nothing amazing, but you, you know, you're getting solid stuff out of the dude. But this year, this year has been different. This year, he is one of the best headers in all of minor league baseball. In fact, if you just go by numbers, he is the best hitter in the minor leagues, all of the minor leagues this year. He's hitting 337 with 31 home runs and 89 RBIs, and he's done it all in just 80 games played. 80. 89 RBIs in 80 games. That's absurd. He's got an OBP of 442. He's slugging 721. His OPS is 1.162. And if you think he has a problem maybe with lefties or righties that, you know, he can only hit lefties because he's a big right-handed hitter, false. He's hitting 341 with 12 home runs and 29 RBIs against lefties and then against righties, 335, 19 home runs, and 60 RBIs. So you can pick your poison with Luke and Baker. The Cardinals have called him up twice this year. You might have seen him. Gave him a handful of at-bats, but for the most part, for whatever reason, they have parked him on the bench like he's Taylor Motter, like he's been in the minor leagues for 10 seasons, been with like six organizations, and is having a fluky year. He's not Taylor Motter. He's something better than Taylor Motter. He's a guy competing for the Triple Crown at the highest level of minor league baseball. This is not some guy down in the Florida Complex League doing this. He's at Triple A Memphis. He's got nowhere else to go but up to the major leagues. And we're at the point of a uh, Cardinal season here where everything is about the future, right? Like that's what we're worried about. It's all about next year. We want to see the kids. I want to see the kids. I want to see the prospects, the guys who are going to be competing for jobs next year, both hitting and pitching. We're impatiently <laughs> awaiting the arrival of Mason Wynn at some point. We're hoping at the back end of August here that he'll get the call up and uh, be able to get a taste of Major League Baseball. We'll see how this uh, this mild glutes strain goes with him, in case you didn't hear about that. Yeah, hit the hit the bag a little off or something like that and uh, felt a little, little twinge in his butt talks. And um, we've seen Matthew Libertor. We've seen Zach Thompson come up, come back up, really. Had a fantastic outing the other day. Unfortunately, it was wasted because the Cardinals' offense just vanished. But Zach Thompson looked fantastic. Uh, I hope we get a chance to see some other pitchers who were down in the minor leagues, guys that are high on the prospect list, guys like Michael McGreevy, uh, Gordon Graceffo. I, I hope we can see guys like this make a start or two just to give them a little taste uh, of what Major League Baseball is all about. 
But if anybody other than Mason Wynn has earned a shot to really compete for a spot on the roster, it's Luke and Baker. It's Luke and Baker. Like, what on earth does this guy got to do to get an actual chance at playing at the major league level? And I realize that he can't play anywhere but DH and first base. But so what? So what? I mean, again, this team is going nowhere this year. Why not let Goldie rest a little bit? Goldie's not exactly exactly killing the ball right now. Okay? He looks a little bit tired. He looks a little bit worn out. It's been a draining year on all of these guys because they haven't been winning. And so to try to complete these last two months, it's going to be a grind. And I don't see what the point is in running Goldie into the ground at age 35, going to be 36 next month in September at this point of his career for a season that is lost. So why not bring him up? Let him take some of those spots. And you can't tell me you don't have room at the DH position for Luke and Baker right now. You've got Donovan out, so you don't have to worry about him. Remember, he couldn't play the field anymore. So he had a DH. So you don't have that problem. Gorman has been pretty darn good at second base this year. He needs the reps to keep getting better. He doesn't need to be DH anymore. Let him play second base full time. You've got Tommy Edmond and hopefully Mason Wynn at some point at shortstop. You can rotate your outfield with Walker getting a ton of reps in the outfield. You know you want to do that. O'Neal, Carlson, uh, Newbar, Burleson, they'll cover the final of the other two spots in the outfield. You pretty much know what you have in them. No need to push O'Neal with his injury history over these last two months. Play him a couple games, give him a night off. Uh, Contreras, he doesn't need to be DHing anymore at this point of the season. Let him hit when he catches, and when he's not catching, give him the day off. There's no need to push that dude. When Ali wants to get Arenado or Goldie off their feet, which is always the uh, the quote we hear, we want to get them off their feet, and they slide him into the DH spot for a day, don't. Just let them have the day off. You don't have to DH them anymore. You're not playing for anything anymore. Let Baker get some work at first base, along with Burleson. Moving forward, Goldie could probably use a couple of more extra days off going into next season. He could probably use that. You see how he's getting tired this year? Remember how he got tired last year? Maybe a few days off would help him out. You also don't have Goldie under contract after next season. It would kind of be nice to have a plan for post-Goldschmidt life. I realize the Cardinals will likely try to extend him and bring him back, but eventually you're not going to play him every day over there at first base. Let's see what you got in these guys. But but if you're going to bring him up, which they should, you got to give the dude a real shot. You got to give him a real shot at the major league level. If he stinks, then so be it. I'm wrong. You can make fun of me and say, hey, we told you so. He's he's not good enough. He's a triple-A hitter. Not good enough at the major leagues, but you don't know that yet. And if you do find out that he can't cut it at the major league level, well, so what? At least you found out. And you found out during a season, it doesn't matter. You know, you're not playing for anything anymore. Normally, the Cardinals are headed to the playoffs or pushing to be in the playoffs. That's not the case this year. You can afford to let some of these guys play and just see what they got. But don't bury him on the bench or bury him at Memphis anymore. Find out if he could be a legitimate DH for you next season. You know, some guys blossom later than others. Not everybody comes out of the gate at the age 21, 22, and it's just amazing. It doesn't always happen. Uh, David Ortiz, when I was thinking about DHs, that was the first name that came to my mind as somebody who later on in his career ended up becoming something greater. If you remember, David Ortiz got released by the Twins at age 26. Released, not traded, not like, eh, going to be a free agent. You know, we're just going to let him walk. He got released, goes to Boston, and is now in the Hall of Fame. Didn't really start his career at the major league level until he was 27 years old, like really taking off. He had some okay years there with Minnesota, but they clearly didn't believe in him. Uh. But even if you get like Travis Hafner was a name I thought of as well, a guy who was just basically a DH. If you can get Travis Hafner production out of him for three or four years, you'll take that, right? Heck, if he gives you two years of what Luke Voigt did 
with the Yankees. If you, you get two years of that, you'll take that because he wasn't so bad. You'll take 20 home runs and 70 RBIs or whatever it was. But you'll never know unless you give him a real chance. And you've got nothing to lose. So why not give it a try? I'm driving the bus, and I have been driving the bus for Team Baker all season. All season. And a lot of people point and laugh at me because <laughs> they just don't think Luke and Baker is a major league player. But I don't think you know that yet. And I hope I'm the one laughing in the end when the Baker bombs come to a, to a town near you. But if he gets away and starts slugging for another team, I'm, I'm going to be the first one in line to point at you and say, I told you so. Let me know your thoughts below on YouTube and on Twitter. What do you think? Luke and Baker, should we give him a shot? Do you give him 20, 25 games? See what he can do at the major league level, or do you think it's a waste of time and we should move on? Let me know. Cardinals and Rays play tonight. We're going to pre preview uh, the Tampa Bay Rays next on Locked on Cardinals. This episode is being brought to you by Better Help. Life isn't always sunshine and rainbows. You know that. I know that. Things are tough. Whether you're dealing with decisions around your career, you're dealing with uh, relationship problems, you know, family issues. There's a ton of different stressful things that, that can be going on in your life that therapy can help you with. It'll help you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life. So that, that uh, you can move forward. You can do it with confidence. You can do it with excitement. Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and understanding. And it's not just for people who are dealing with like major traumatic experiences. It's for anyone who just needs someone there to listen to them and wants to become their better self and their best self overall. And that's where BetterHelp can benefit you. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. If you're thinking about starting therapy, you should give BetterHelp a try because it's entirely online. Don't have to go anywhere. And it's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule, not to the doctor's schedule. So let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash MLB today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash Locked on MLB. The Cardinals battle the race tonight. You can catch every pitch of the Cardinals hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search Cardinals. I want to thank you guys for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. Again, leave your comments on YouTube and on Twitter anytime you want. Your feedback is always welcome and encouraged. Positive and negative. I like the positive better, but I understand the negatives. Sometime it's quite all right. We don't always have to agree on things. Uh, we can agree on this tonight. The Tampa Bay Rays are a pretty good baseball team, and that's who the Cardinals are going to play this evening and for the next few days. Um, they started out hottest team of the year. Remember, 22-6. and 22-6 and six in April, they just took off. They had kind of a soft schedule early on, and I, I kind of gave them flack over that. I was like, yeah, you're beating up on some of the worst teams in the league, they were pounding guys like the Oakland A's and the Washington Nationals and teams that were not in a position to compete this year. But eventually, when they started playing better teams, they beat those guys too. <laughs> so um, I had to give them all the credit in the world, man. They were doing really, really well. They'd carved out a nice big lead in the AL East. On July 1st, which was just a little over a month ago, they were six and a half games up in the division. Here on August 8th, they are now three games back in the division behind Baltimore. They had a, a tough July. They go 8-16, and 16, a lot of injuries to the pitching staff. And we know here in St. Louis how important pitching can be, and if you don't have it, you're going to lose. And that's what's happened to them in July. They're A. Shane McClanahan. He went down, came back. Now he's hurt again. Uh, Tyler Glass now took a, a while to come back from injury this offseason. He's always got injuries. Um, is dealing with a back issue right now. Drew Rasmussen is gone for the year with an elbow issue. Uh, Andrew Kittredge out with an elbow, Garrett Clevenger out for the year with a knee, Jeffrey Springs, who was having a great start to the year out for the year with an elbow, a lot of issues with the pitching staff. So that's weakened them big time. Offensively, you've still got Randy Rosarina, who we talked about. We got Wander Franco, but they've had some real surprise contributors this year. Guys, you may not have been all that familiar with. As a guy who does fantasy baseball, a couple of these dudes, never even heard of them. Never even heard of them. First baseman, Yandy Diaz, okay? 
nothing anything special through his entire career. Age 32, all of a sudden this year is hitting 315, 16 home runs and 55 RBIs. His best season ever. Comes out of nowhere, becomes an all-star. Um, Isak Paredes. Now, I know that he was kind of a decent prospect for the Tigers. Showed a lot of pop last year with Tampa Bay. He's now hitting 253 this year. Leads the club in home runs with 21 and in RBIs with 66. Who had Isak Paredes leading the Tampa Bay Raids in home runs and RBIs in August? Nobody. Nobody thought that. Jose Siri, age 28, 21 home runs out of nowhere, out of nowhere. The Rays, somehow, some way, they find these guys and they continue to excel. They do it all the time. That's how they keep their payroll so low. They don't overpay for any high price free agents. And they find these dudes who just go bonkers for them. I, I wish the Cardinals could, could pull off this magic act once in a while because they go out and pay for expensive guys, and they usually suck. Rays have figured it out somehow. I don't know if it's their scouting department. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. But these guys just have career years when they go to Tampa Bay. It's bizarre. Uh, Franco has been the only guy out of the regulars, the regular everyday players, who's actually hitting pretty well at the moment. Most of them are in kind of funk right now, so maybe the Cardinals caught them at a good time. But tonight they're going to have their prize free agent pitching uh, pitcher, starting pitcher on the mound. They signed uh, Zach Afflin this offseason. They got him. Remember, he was with Philly. Dealt with some injuries. So the um, the market for Eflin was kind of, eh, you know, you didn't you knew he was going to get top dollar, but he was a risk, injury risk. But they ended up uh, signing him. Leads the team in wins this year. He's got 12. He's 12 and 6, 3.46 ERA. Leads the team in strikeouts, 121 and 122 in the third innings. If only, right? If only. The Cardinals had signed somebody like that. But with the Cardinals luck, you sign Zach Eflin and he ends up hurting his shoulder and he's and he's terrible. So that's just the way the ball bounces when it comes to the Cardinals this year. But uh, the Rays gave him three years, $40 million. He's making 11 this year, 11 next year. He'll make 18 in 2025. But that's kind of like Steven Matt's money. And then you look at it and you go, what have the Cardinals gotten out of Steven Matt's until recently? Not a whole lot. And then look what they're getting for Zach Eflin. So, um, Miles Michaelis will be on the mound for the Cardinals tonight. Miles six and seven on the year. Disappointing season, obviously. Um, did have a good outing his last time on the mound against Minnesota. Uh, that was his, uh, what was that, August 1st? August 1st. Uh, that was before the suspension kicked in for the shenanigans with the Cubbies. Uh, gave up two earned runs over seven innings, but he lost three to two. Same stuff, different day for this team, man. Pitching good, hitting bad. Batting good, pitching bad. Batting and starting pitching good. Bullpen, bad. Round and round we go here in 2023. So um, hopefully they can pull out a victory tonight. They got, they're playing spoiler from here on out. So maybe they can play spoiler tonight against Tampa Bay. We're going to wrap things up next with an update on how the former Cardinals are doing so far post-trade deadline. We'll have that next for you on Locked on Cardinals. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. And it's the same when it comes to your vehicle because every part needs to fit just right. I've told you this before. It's like a puzzle. Right pieces fit in the right spots. Everything looks great. You try jamming things in into the wrong spots and the puzzle looks like crap and it doesn't work. <laughs> so next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors with the eBay guaranteed fit. You can be sure that every part you need fits just right. And fits just right the first time around. So add your ride to My Garage. Very, very simple. You add it to My Garage. Then you look for the green check to know that the part will fit. Or you get your money back. If something just so happens to be off, they'll give you your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game. When you shop on eBay Motors, and with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. So get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. Eligible items only. Exclusion supply. Cardinals are on the road to face the Tampa Bay Rays tonight. You can catch every pitch of the Cardinals hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search Cardinals. Now, we checked in with the new prospects that the Cardinals were able to acquire at the trade deadline. We did that in yesterday's show, so if you didn't check that out, 
you can go back and watch that and listen to that, whichever one you want to do, and uh, get updates on uh, how these guys have been doing. So far, not too bad for most of them. Now today, I'd like to check in on some old friends, some of the ones that uh, we traded away. So let's start with Jack Flaherty, who was awesome. I don't know if you caught any of that game, but he was awesome in his first outing for Baltimore. Six innings, one run, four hits, eight strikeouts, two walks, gets the W. Look good. Jordan Montgomery, stellar for Texas. Six innings, two runs, six hits, six strikeouts, one walk, one home run, got the win. Doing very Jordan Montgomery like stuff. Uh, Jordan Hicks has made four appearances for the Blue Jays. Got dinged in that first outing, gave up two runs on three hits and one inning of work. But since then, three and a third innings, no runs, one hit, two walks, one hit batter, only two strikeouts, but more importantly, two saves and a hole. They've loved him. Paul DeYoung, six games with Toronto. Not so good for Paul E.D., hitting 87. Not 187, not 287. 87. He is two for 23 with one run scored, no home runs, no RBIs. He struck out eight times. Looks like one of those uh, Paul DeYoung funks got him at a bad time. Uh, Hennessy Cabrera, also with Toronto. He's made eight appearances, had one bad outing where he gave up three runs on three hits and a walk in one inning. You know, we've seen those innings many times from Hennessy Cabrera, but outside of that, he's been quite good. He's 1 0, he's got two holds. ERA of 3.24, but the three runs are the only three runs, the ones that he gave up in that one bad outing. Those are the only ones he's given up so far in eight and a third innings. He's got eight strikeouts, just one walk. Opponents are hitting 167 against him. We've seen Cabrera be very, very good. He just didn't mesh well with what was going on here in St. Louis anymore. So they got him out of there, and he's thriving with uh, Toronto. And finally, Chris Stratton, damn glad to meet you. Chris Stratton, damn glad we miss you, uh, with Texas. Has made three appearances, has thrown four and two-thirds innings, hasn't allowed a run, has given up three hits, struck out four, no walks, has a hold, doing what he's supposed to be doing. Not getting overused, <laughs> which he got and got overused here in St. Louis, but he's doing well. So it seems like everyone besides DeYoung is flourishing and enjoying playing ball and winning clubs thus far. And good for them. Good for them. Like, we're not wishing ill things on these guys who got traded away. It's not their fault that the Cardinals weren't any good. I mean, these a lot of these guys were the reason why the Cardinals had any wins at all. But it's good to see that they're doing well for, for other teams, and hopefully the prospects that the team got back in return for them will pan out. We'll find out. Only time can tell. Thanks for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. Be sure to catch every pitch of the Cardinals hometown broadcast for the series against the Rays, which, uh, again, will begin uh, tonight. Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search Cardinals. If you haven't already, please give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Cardinals and at JD Sports Radio. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Help that channel grow. You guys are the best fans of baseball for a reason, and I will see you next time on Locked on Cardinals. Have a good one.